Hello, this is Julian with Coffee Reviews, and today we'll be reviewing the Sebastiano Gaspar Wash Process Guatemala from La Cabra. And there's the box right there. And La Cabra, based out of Copenhagen, Denmark. And no need for a big introduction, as they're one of the most well-known coffee roasters in the entire world, and one that's appeared on this channel on numerous occasions over the years. But they're a coffee roaster I do enjoy going back and revisiting because of their popularity and because I'm interested to see how their coffee has changed since the last time we tried them. This Guatemala did catch my interest because it does sound like my type of coffee. So I figured I'd pull the trigger on this one and give it a shot. So we'll see how it turned out as this right here is day 41. And recipe we went with for this coffee was La Cabra's recipe, which is very similar to our own, just slightly more diluted at a 16.67 to one water to coffee ratio, brewed at 96 degrees Celsius, about 205 degrees Fahrenheit. And I like this one best through the V60, which indicates a more medium fine grind. Rose profile for this one has been consistent with our previous experiences with La Cabra's coffees, which is a fair bit more developed than I think a lot of people remembered their coffees being in the past as this one's a little bit more in line with the more developed side of a medium light in terms of that roast profile by most people's standards and metrics. As interestingly enough, it just feels a little bit more developed than even a lot of American coffee roasters out there. With all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and start discussing this coffee. Day 19, first impression, and we did opt for the V60, and the oddity of La Cabra's coffees continues to remain a theme as it definitely had a slight smoky component right to the start with a slightly jammy stone fruit aspect to it. But for the most part, it was a little bit more of a richer, more robust cup with plenty of the developed characteristics coming through, including a slightly bitter coffee and chocolate aspect with an herbal component to it as well. So as I kind of mentioned, it's been a little bit in line with a lot of the experiences we've had from La Cabra's coffees, which is to say more developed than I might've expected, but given that's been my experiences, it was in line at least in that regard. So for the most part, an okay start. We continue on to day 21, opted for the Chemex, and this was a fair bit of a better day as it still offered a fair bit of those developed qualities, but it felt a little bit more balanced in general with a little bit more of a caramelized sweetness and a slightly bitter florality to the cup. Herbality continued to remain one of the more notable and prominent aspects of this one with a sugary stone fruit still present and notable with the overall sweetness definitely being on the slightly higher side of things relative to expectations for this coffee. So this one was a better day as I just experienced a little bit more sweetness to it. We continue on to day 23, opted for the April Brewer and much of the same as it continues to remain marred by these slightly smoky and developed qualities to the cup with a fair bit of some caramelized as well as stone fruit like aspects present within this one. It's been consistent and pretty straightforward up to this point. Another okay day. For the most part, there's been little to differentiate between the three with some slight differences within the brew methods. Then you on to day 26, slower the temperatures back through the V60 and it continues to retain a lot of those smoky qualities as at this time it was a little bit reminiscent of tobacco and it had that slightly ashy quality that you can experience from these coffees with a little bit more of a darker chocolate component to it yet again. Herbal tea with a notable burnt caramel sweetness and an interesting strong stone fruit that continues to remain ever present throughout. I do have to say this coffee was a little bit more fruit forward than I might have expected, especially given that this is a Guatemalan coffee. With all that being said, that was probably one of the best and most redeeming qualities of this coffee was that very strong stone fruit aspect that was present right from the onset. We continue on to day 29 through the Chemex, and this is possibly the best I'd experienced of this coffee as it continues to offer many of the same aspects, a slightly less smoky version of it, with a little bit more of a slight floral sweetness to it. It had a little bit of that burnt popcorn honeysuckle descriptor that I like to utilize with a lot of these coffees, so that was reminiscent within this one too. We continue on to day 33 opted for the V60 with a Cabra's recipe, and this is actually the best the coffee had been up to this point, as it seemed to reduce a fair bit of the smoky qualities to it, which is kind of interesting to me. The only real big adjustment had been that it was a little bit more diluted, but it worked well enough to give the cup a little bit more clarity and skew a little bit more on a defined apricot side of things, because up to this point, I'd said it's just a little bit more of a generic sort of jammy stone fruit aspect, but this one just had a little bit more definition and clarity to it in general. It's been a little bit more of a sugar cookie-like sweetness too, as it does cool down, which 
as a whole has been a lot more positive given the earlier experiences of this coffee. Day 36 back through the Chemex and it had a really nice day through this brew method as well and if I'm being completely honest there wasn't too much to differentiate between these two brew methods in terms of preferences as there was a little bit more clarity and emphasis on those fruit aspects and just a little bit more clean in general with a nicer floral and sugar cookie like sweetness present yet again. So I think the main reason I opted for the V60 ever so slightly was because of that day 33 mark but day 36 was just behind it. If anything I do have to say that overall I hadn't better results with the Chemex regardless of the recipe, but the V60 just seemed to produce the best cup for this one in general. As uh, day 38, we tried the Chemex one more time and I really liked the balance that it yielded within the cup. It skews ever so slightly in the herbal and jammy stone fruits direction yet again, but the rest of the cup continues to offer a fair bit of herbality, smokiness, and just a little bit more depth in general, most specifically pertaining to the floral aspects that are present within it. All right, let's go ahead and put up the tasting wheel. So you can see what we're getting. And we have three level fours, so let's go through those real quick. And we'll start with the finish level four. I don't think I necessarily have too much to say on that. It was a very kind of smoky finish that was present within it. But in addition to that, there was a strong enough fruit quality as well as sweet quality to give it just a little bit more depth and just straightforward smokiness to it. So having that there at the level four, I think that's basically in line with expectations, but for the most part, it's skewed specifically in those directions, which are going to be demonstrated in the rest of this tasting wheel, as the sweetness did reach a level four. And that's not necessarily a small mark for La Cabra's coffees, because the coffees we've reviewed from them in the past haven't necessarily been the sweetest coffees. So this one scoring a level four might be one of the more sweet coffees we have reviewed from them in general. I do have to say that the sweetness was one of the more redeeming qualities of this coffee right from the start. So having that there at level four is pretty good for me. Stone fruit level four, as I kind of mentioned, the stone fruit was ever present right from the start, but throughout the entirety of the time drinking it, I couldn't help but notice just how much of a fruit quality there was present within this coffee. And that coupled with the sweetness definitely did give this the most redeeming qualities it had for this one. Way more fruit forward than I might've expected. So credit to them in that regard. And as I'm looking at the rest of this tasting wheel, we have so many level threes that I guess we will try to speed run through all of them one by one, but that's been similar to a lot of the other coffees we've reviewed from La Cabra, and that's that they kind of cluster around that level three mark for the most part, as it rarely skews higher than that. And for the most part, it seems to offer so many of those things that it rarely skews too much lower than that. Let's run through those. And we'll start with the acidity level three, not necessarily the most bright cup, didn't necessarily expect it to be in the most bright cup given all of the things that were present within it. And if anything, it still might be on the slightly lower side of that level three. So that part's interesting. Florality, level three. That's one of the things I'd mentioned is that there is a slightly bitter floral component to this one. But even then it did have some nice sweet floral components. I even mentioned honeysuckle at a little bit of measure on certain days anyway. So that's definitely justified there at that level three. A little bit of spice, a little bit of salt, a little bit of the dark berry aspects were present within this one as well. A slightly undefined strict component also present, so we can see all of these level threes at play here. Chocolate, that was one of the things I'd mentioned, a little bit more of a dark chocolate as it did have that slightly bitter quality to it as well. Caramel, level three. I'd mentioned as well that there was a slightly burnt caramelized aspect to this one, which with slightly more developed coffees can be a little bit of a redeeming quality to them if it's done well. Smokiness, level three. Yeah, it's always kind of a little unfortunate when we do have a coffee that scores that high as I tend to prefer coffees that don't have any sort of smokiness to them. So that did reach there at that mark. Bitterness, level three, it came in a bunch of different directions. That of course being slightly bitter chocolate, slightly bitter florality, as well as a slightly bitter just coffee component in general, that's generic coffee bitterness to it. Savoriness, level three, that's the other thing that I briefly mentioned and it was just ever so, that interesting herbal quality to it just caused this one to score as high as it did in terms of that savory component. So level three there as well. And then the last thing worth discussing is the cleanliness level three. And usually when a washed coffee scores a level three for cleanliness, it is for one of two reasons. Either it has some interesting sort of fermentiness to it, which is very rare, or it's because the smokiness did seem to take away from that. Or in the case of Kenyan coffees, there's a lot of tomato-like aspects to it. But for this case, it is because of the smokiness and it's very hard for me to score a level four when there are coffees that you can taste the profile in a much more clean and defined manner when they don't have that sort of smokiness to them. 
So I had to chart this one at level three, best place I can put it. But as I'm looking at this tasting wheel, I do think it's a pretty good representation of what I was getting from this coffee. All right, so my overall thoughts and impressions of this coffee. Honestly, it's actually been on the better side of coffees that I have had from La Cabra as the reviews we've had of them in the past haven't necessarily been the most positive. So credit to them in that regard as this one was redeemed by the sweeter and much more fruit forward profile of this one. So those were some really nice things that I did take away. So when I'm comparing it side by side to a lot of the coffees I've had from La Cabra in the past, it's been better in that regard. But on that same scale, it has been pretty much in line with my previous experiences from La Cabra's coffees, which is to say, I think that they're fine. They're not necessarily my favorites. This isn't going to be my type of coffee. It skews a little bit too much in directions that I don't specifically like and wanted to have some nice qualities to it. The negative qualities did seem to outweigh those a lot for me, most specifically the smokiness, which is something I'm going to go back to because it just doesn't necessarily lend itself towards my preference of coffees. So this one was fine. Better end of La Cabra coffees for me, but even then, I just haven't been the biggest fan of La Cabra's coffees since we've actually started reviewing them. The type of person I would suggest this coffee to is, again, in line with maybe some of La Cabra's recent stuff, as I've heard a lot of feedback from others that they've been turned off by the type of coffees that La Cabra has been roasting, specifically coffees in this sort of style. But if you don't mind a little bit more smokiness, if you do prefer just a little bit more development to it, then this one does offer some nice characteristics in general as it's a nicely balanced cup. I mean, as you're looking at that tasting wheel, it seems to skew so strong in so many different directions that it gives you a lot of different things. It gives you a little bit of that coffee traditionality, which is one direction I want to point somebody towards, traditionality in coffee. A little bit of a chocolate component while still offering some fruit aspects to it and some nice sweetness above average sweetness again that's one of the big selling points on this one so a couple of those things together maybe a little bit more of a sweeter traditional coffee with a slight bit more of a fruit focus best direction i can point somebody towards and the best way i can leave this review if you've by chance had an opportunity to try this coffee i'd love to know your thoughts and impressions of it as well if you're enjoying the content give this video a like subscribe if not already subscribed this right here has been a review of the sebastiana gaspar Wash Process Guatemala from La Cabra. Thank you for watching.